Good morning, and Merry Christmas from all of us here at St. James Anglican Church, nestled near the beautiful Rideau River in Manitick, Ontario. It is a different Christmas for us because we are shut down due to the spread of COVID in our part of the vineyard. And like so many others, we are celebrating a simpler Christmas this year by reaching out to you and yours through the wonder of modern technology with two services which can be accessed through our church website on and through Facebook. Our Christmas Eve service led by the Reverend Carrie Brennan was shared last evening and this morning we invite you to join us for our Christmas Day reflection. Welcome wherever you are. We are blessed to have you join us. My name is Bill Byers and I'm the re retired honorary assistant here at St. James. Please feel free to join in the singing or simply listen as Ellen and Carrie sing for us, Hark the Herald Angels. On Christmas Eve, our worship is centered around the Christmas story as told in Luke's Gospel. But on Christmas morning, we begin the process of understanding what the story tells us happened in Bethlehem so long ago, 
through the experience today of St. John the Evangelist. I recall a time many years ago when a group of us were linked, were asked by a pastor to choose our places in the Christmas story and to prepare a, a reflection from that perspective. <clears throat> I chose to be a person living in the market town of Bethlehem at the time of the Roman census taking. My reflection looked something like this. My town is filled to overflowing with people returning for Caesar's bothersome census. This morning, everyone is talking about a baby born last night in Samuel's barn because his parents couldn't find anywhere to, else to stay. People are talking about strange goings-on related to this couple and their baby. In Bethlehem, we like to know what's going on in town, so everyone has a tale to tell. I feel compelled to check out the story myself. After all, inquiring minds want to know. I pull on my warmest cloak and head out through the crowded streets, stubbing my toes in the ruts on the streets and stumbling over the rubbish left behind by so many new arrivals until I find my way down the narrow path to Samuel's barn. Apparently, I am not the only curious soul out and about so early this morning. Sure enough, there is a baby. Its mother looks exhausted, yet serene. The father is older, a kindly face, yet worried about all the commotion. Some shepherds have arrived from the hills above the town, country people yammering that a whole sky full of angels appeared to them while they were in the fields. The angels told them to come here to worship this baby, they say, because he is born of God and will fulfill God's purposes. Joseph is listening to their story, which they are telling over and over in their astonishment. He's trying to get details out of them as to what exactly the angels had told them. I look at the baby, all wrapped up tightly and lying asleep in the hay. He looks like any other baby. Can it be this child, that this child is to grow into someone who will be important in fulfilling God's plan for us? I find it hard to believe but there's something going on. There's no doubt about that. Things do happen. We're told to expect it. Why shouldn't it be here and now? I talk to the mother. She assures me that she has everything she needs, that people are being very kind. Her eyes look into mine with a sense of wonder through her exhaustion. I move to say to her, thanks be to God. She smiles and nods. I slip away. The shepherds are still talking with Joseph. Others are popping by as curious as I have been. I walk away slowly, pondering. There's a feeling of expectancy and excitement. Why shouldn't this be the moment? I wonder, here and now, in David's town, the prophet said it would be. Could this be the time? Could this be the child? Let us pray. Generous creator, whose word came among us in the holy child of Bethlehem, may the light of faith illumine our hearts and shine in our words and deeds through him who is Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading this morning will be from the letter to the Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things through whom he created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. 
and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. Or of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his servants flames of fire. But of the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You have looked righteously and hated wickedness. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And in the beginning, Lord, you founded the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will all perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like clothing. Like a cloak, you will roll them up, and like clothing, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will never end. Hear what the Spirit is saying to us this Christmas day. Ellen and Carrie will be singing, See Amid the Winter's Snow. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, 
Lord Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from John, from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you this day in the name of God, creator, redeemer, and life-giving spirit. May the truth be spoken and the truth be heard. And the word became flesh and lived among us. All of Christianity, indeed all of Christmas, hangs upon that word flesh. It is a word that must have existed in God's mind or God's plan before the invention of email and iPhones, laptops, airplanes, automobiles, before cities were constructed or nations established, before oceans first lapped upon the shores, before stars swirled through our solar systems, even before the ticking of time itself, when nothing covered everything. There was God thinking of flesh. And then it happened. About 2,017 years ago, if we have the timing right, the word became flesh and lived among us. In other words, Jesus Christ became a human, a real human who bruised when punched and bled if cut, who could feel the throb of a headache and the chills of a fever, the God who measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, as Isaiah said, could wrap his hand around a cool cup of water, the one who created the great creatures of the sea could enjoy fish and chips if he so desired. For 33 years, this Emmanuel, God with us, walked his miles in our feet, in our ankles, our kneecaps, our shins, our hip joints. The infinite became an infant and grew into a man. How odd of God. What can be stranger than God in a manger, that God in human form should be born out of wedlock to a peasant mother in an insignificant village, that the king of kings should emerge from a virgin's womb into a filthy stable. How very odd. The shepherds said this angel sang, peace on earth, goodwill toward men but there was precious little of that around. As an adult, he worked with his hands, strong carpenter's hands adept at building things from wood. In his ministry, he often hung out with the marginalized of society, lepers, prostitutes, beggars, tax collectors. He lived in a simple home 
nothing to brag about for sure. His closest friends would desert him, his government would humiliate him. Naked, flogged, and spat upon, this carpenter would be nailed to a piece of wood like any other common criminal in an oppressive, in a r oppressive regime. But John reminds us that the Word became flesh and lived among us. The Word was incarnated, embodied in human form to live and breathe and die as one of us. Christmas is a celebration of the incarnation. It is, season which, it is a season which points back just over 2,000 years to the time when Christ abandoned his home in the universe and came to earth. It speaks of God's interest in the nitty-gritty details of our lives and how Christ became flesh to redeem our flesh. This holiday reminds us there are no limits to how far the Creator will, is willing to go to recreate his creation. Christmas also points us forward by calling each of us to imitate Jesus by becoming flesh for those in need. In a digital world of avatars and Facebook, where flesh is so easily separated from spirit, Christian, Christmas shows us that Jesus came to earth as a person, not as a pixel. You could feel a pulse beating strongly in his veins. Christmas challenges us to make ourselves available to others, both physically and emotionally, to walk alongside. The doctrine of the Incarnation is not an abstract concept that lives in some ivory tower available to a few enlightened individuals. It belongs to everyone. For we are changed with the, charged with the mission of becoming the hands and feet of God in a world that needs God's healing touch. Such a mission is particularly important in these strange times when we are so separated one from another. Reaching out, nurturing relationships, telephoning family and friends, baking the most wonderful cookies and bringing them to an old guy who is a disaster in the kitchen. And I want to say thank you, Sharon, for that. Christmas reminds us of the importance of all of that. Take time this Christmas season to reflect upon the mystery of the Incarnation over the next 12 days. The divine descent of Jesus Christ changed how humanity can relate to the Creator. Just look at the difference in the relationship that humans had with God as revealed in the Old Testament or Hebrew Scriptures and the relationship that we see in the New Testament because Jesus was God in human form. God incarnate, we can relate better to our Creator and that relationship is now based on love and not on fear. What a huge difference. And so may the lowly manger remind us that the Word made flesh, became flesh and remained flesh so that even now we are his body here on earth. May the star of Bethlehem illuminate the truth that God is in the business of forgiveness, that nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate us from God's infinite love and grace. May the gifts we unwrap direct our attention to the greatest gift ever given, when God gave his only Son, that humanity may enjoy everlasting life. As we gather physically and virtually, may we keep the person of Jesus Christ not simply as part of our holiday, but at the very core of our existence. May we see Christ in everyone we meet this Christmas, and may they see the Christ child in us. And so now let us pray. Giver of all that is good, we thank you today for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born into poverty in a hard and cruel time, who gave himself for us and lives with us in glory. We thank you for all your friends and prophets who have gone before us, for, who 
for those who taught us to celebrate this feast of the nativity with beloved scriptures and wonderful carols and with loud rejoicing. Help us to teach those who come after us that Christmas is a holy time, a time to seek reconciliation and peace. Bless us, Lord, as we seek Christ in the lowly mangers of the world, as we seek to honor the mystery of the incarnation in our midst, remembering always that you made us and all humanity in your divine image. Bless our families, friends, neighbors, and those who are alone this day, those who even today are working in our hospitals and care facilities, the testing sites and vaccination clinics, and all who seek to care for us, especially at this challenging time. We pray for comfort and healing for those who are sick, lonely, hungry, oppressed, and in any way distressed. Remembering in our hearts those for whom we pray at this time. And we pray for the leaders of our churches, our communities, our country, and the nations of the world that in every heart the true love of peace may be kindled, that justice and peace may increase until the world is filled with the knowledge of your will. Help us to gladly welcome today and always your wisdom, your power, your Emmanuel, your Prince of Peace. Almighty God, you wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored our human nature May we share the divine life of your Son, Jesus Christ, who humbled himself to share our humanity and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so with joy in our hearts, let us gather our prayers in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And save us from the time of trial. And deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us give glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. May the God of infinite goodness scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your hearts with holiness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. And may this strange Christmas be one of the most blessed you ever experience. We will be closing our worship this morning with Ellen and Carrie singing Joy to the World, followed by a musical reflection. Wonders 
of his love and wonders of his love and wonders, wonders of his love.